Hey everybody, so it is Friday, July 3rd. I can't believe it's the July 4th weekend, uh, but it is Friday, so we're gonna do another Jay's Chat. Uh, and today I have the pleasure of having uh, Miss Isis King with me, and she knows how much I love her, and I'm so excited, and I know she's excited to really break down and talk behind the scenes of Cycle 11. Hey, Ron, it's my boy Ron on there, but I think Isis is on, so let me just get her connected. Uh, why do every time I do this, this is what happens? Let me just try again. Da -da 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 -da. Trying to find Isis here. Here she is. No. Give my sound on. I think she is connecting. It is waiting. Yes, there she is. Hi. Hey, can you hear me okay? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, I can. I'm just, uh, oh, sorry, that's Bella. She, she's, she's hearing me go, hey. She hears how excited I am. That's so funny. Let me get me all set up here. Push this back a little bit. Oh, okay. Yeah, we got to get our little like, shot right. I forgot we're like half screen. You know, mm -hmm. I've been doing all these Zooms and interviews and meetings and stuff all week. So I'm so like, I have it together. So you had it all posed for the full screen. I mean, but, you, I, I have to give you a little something. Oh, you're giving me everything today. <laughs> you're giving me lash. The, oh, I love the dress, by the way. It's a, it's a uh, one piece. Oh, ooh, cute. Live, gorgeous. Well, this is, this is you all about, what? Let me cut to Aaron really quickly because I know talking about this, I'm going to get a little high. So. <laughs> a little Go put your air on, girl. I know I should have actually, I should have actually pumped my air up. Hold on, I'm going to do the same thing. This is going to be hilarious. I'm going to hit my little. I, okay, I knocked it down two degrees. This is a first. I'm like, uh, and I don't know what was with me to pulling out this like old little shiny shirt. It's like real special, uh, but. <laughs> While Isis is putting on her air uh, conditioning, I got to tell you guys, thank you so much for your questions. There were so, 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 so many questions. Isis, I don't know if you were hearing, there are so many questions trying to go through them today, both from your page, my page, like all the different social platforms. People love you. They love you and they want to hear your experience behind the scenes of uh, America's Next Top Model Cycle 11. So, I mean, there are so many questions. I tried to put them in some semblance of order. We're, we're, there's no way we're gonna get to all of them. I'm gonna tell you that. I'm ready. Let me You're... cut this up. I'm ready. I'm ready to. You ready to dive in? God, you look so gorgeous this morning. I'm feeling like, ooh, I should have put on more than my little, did you catch my little shiny shirt? I'm like, what is going on? I pulled this out. I didn't even know it was shiny. It's old. <laughs> Always look polished. So. <laughs> okay. Well, let's dive right into the questions because uh, basically they're all to you and everyone just loves that you're doing this today. And, uh, and you know how I'm excited that we get to do this um, together. So, um, and I, this person's username got cut off. I am so sorry. It looks like BJ Ban, I'm so sorry I got the screen grab, cut it off. I have a ton of questions for you. Miss Isis King, can you explain the process of how Tyra and her crew invited you out to try out for cycle 11? So here's a two part question. Um, the second part of that is, um, if Kimberly from cycle 10 had not quit the competition, would there have been an elimination outside judging, judging panel in that cycle, like how it was in cycles three, 11 and 13 and 15? So I can explain that after you dive into yours because last week, Sutan and I talked a little bit about how you and I met the first time on set in Cycle 10, but why don't you tell your experience? Okay, so first of all, you were the first person I talked to because <laughs> you were uh, telling the models what to do in Cycle 10. I remember we, you talked about it last week because you know I've been on there like <laughs> text, uh, tweeting you, um, not tweeting, Instagramming you, but... Yeah. Um, I was at the photo shoot. It was super cold. Freezing. Super Freezing. Cold. But at the time I was living in a shelter and I was such a huge fan of top models. So I was saying like, once I got the opportunity to be a background extra, it's no way I'm gonna like not soak in all of this. So I was listening to you, like they, it was five of us background girls and they were swapping out us. It was like three at a time. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, I'm the biggest top model fan. I'm going to be in all these pictures. I don't care if I'm anemic. I don't care if anything. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm 
I remember at one point I was shaking and you guys was like, you can switch out. I'm like, no, it's okay. So then at the end of that, you know, watching Top Model growing up, right? It was before I transitioned. So I didn't even think me being five foot seven and a half that it would even be a possibility to <laughs> model outside of the ballroom scene. Um, but I did that. I got to be an extra. And I was like, wait a second, I can do this. I was taking all the feedback you were giving the, the models. And doing it 10 times better. 10 was, times better. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to creep up in their light. I'm going to listen to all the critiques. Because I'm at the time I was in a barroom saying, like, I'm a competitor. I'm like, no, I'm going to take this too. Mm -hmm. And you were saying, like, oh, background extra. Can you do this, do that? And I made sure purposely to tell you, hey, Mr. J, my name is Isis. To separate me from the other girls, mm -hmm. I didn't have to go anywhere. But I was like, let me tell him because I'm not an extra. I'm Isis King, honey. Okay. Yes, okay. yes. And then and then I started using your name. I'm like, oh, Isis is coming for you. Isis is coming for you. I started using my name and that stayed in there, which when I watched it, I was like, oh, snap, like that stayed in there. So I remember coming to you at the end and saying, hey, has... You know, just a quick This was question. off camera, by the way. The cameras were done. We were wrapped, yeah. Off camera. I said, hey, you know, would it be possible for me to possibly, because I didn't think I would really have the courage to do it. I was like, would it be possible for me to um, audition? Has there ever been anyone who did it? And, and he was like, yeah, you know, girls, trans girls have auditioned. He was like, you're good. Like, if you want to do it, just go for it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I was like, you know what? Yes, I'm going to go for it. <clears throat> Sorry. Yeah, that, that's okay. And literally what happened was, um, obviously, I go through all the film. I narrow down the girls' best shots to usually about between five and eight, depending on what the shoot is. And then uh, I, I go through them with Tyra. And when I sat down with Tyra, I basically just said, just so you know, this girl, Isis, stole all the girls' show. Because you did. You stole the show. And of course, we're editing for the girls' best shots. But when we were flipping through the film, I said, catch this girl out. Ba -ba 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 -ba. We were flipping through, and she's like, oh, Miss Isis is turning it. So you became Miss Isis before she even knew you. <laughs> and, um, and I said that you wanted to try out, and, and I, I said that I encouraged it, and I think that you should. And she kind of fell in love with you. So I know, I, I don't know, how did the producers reach out to you to try out? How did that work? So shout out to uh, Kara Barnett. Find out we have the same birthday. We're still really yes. close. Uh, she ended up being uh, the Wrangler for for us, like the mm -hmm. lead Wrangler. Now she's doing her thing over at BET, like taking over. She's amazing. Yes, yes. Uh, but Kara called me. I remember I was working at a hair salon in New York, and I got a call, and, and she was just like, people in really high places really want you to audition. Because at that point, when I got off, I was like, you know what? I just started my transition. I'm in a shelter. I don't think I could possibly handle that bandwidth of a competition and being mm -hmm. a public like that, I don't think I could really handle it. Yeah. So I decided that I wasn't going to do it. Mm. So I reached out and she was just like, you know, people, someone really high up really wants you to audition. I was like, oh, okay, thanks. Thank you. And I didn't respond. I, like, I didn't go from there. And then maybe like, she just kept calling. Mm -hmm. I, don't know, I don't know how long of a period. I feel like maybe it was a few months. Mm -hmm. I was the background extra in December, I think October, between October and December. And it came out like in February and we were shooting in, I think like uh, April. So yeah. I was like, oh no. So for a few months, she like kept calling. I was like, no. And then I remember someone who was a mentor at the time. I asked him, he was like, well, why was holding you back from trying? And I was just like, well, I think it could put me in danger. I think, mm -hmm. you know, about the logistics of me actually doing it in that time. And he said, well, what's the positive thing that could possibly happen? And I said, well, maybe if I share my story, it was possible that I could get my surgery. Mm -hmm. I didn't know. Mm -hmm. But honestly, I was like, if I share my story, maybe somebody will see it and want to help me with my surgery. And that's literally was the reason I said, okay, I'll tell her yes. I didn't think that when I told her yes, literally within 48 hours, they sent me to someone who helped me with um, film my tapes and then I had to print out like a million papers, like sign it. And literally yeah. the hours of me saying yes, I left the shelter temporarily because then after I got made it to the finals, I had to come back and pack all my stuff. But I bought my first suitcase. I I got on a plane for the first time. I was 20, I just turned 22. Um, yeah, it was literally within 48 hours. I told my coworkers at, at the hair salon, I was like, 
I, I'm going to Project Runway because they knew that I had just <laughs> it was on the top model and they knew they had a feeling something was up. But I just remember signing that NDA and I was like, I don't have no money. I cannot afford this loss. <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to Project Runway. Runway. So, <laughs> And next thing you know, I was I was there. You were there and you were a force. And I was so excited that you were there because I kind of felt like, I'm like, oh, we're getting this moment. Like I felt when you first walked into the, the casting panel room, you know, we had to smile, but we're like, we knew you. I was like, oh, I so want her to do this. I want to do this. But I'm like, I can't show favoritism. I remember blah, blah, blah. You know, it was all of that. By the way, answering like the end of the gentleman's question before about, um, Cycle 10 and Kimberly quitting. Um, so this is just a note. It was a question that came up a lot. So girls, when, when, when they were like looking at, you know, the final count always being 14, you know, we only have 12 episodes and one three recap episodes. So if you do the math, that means there has to be a double elimination somewhere. So in the case of Kimberly, when she quit, they basically actually just ruined the plans. They were gonna do a, a double elimination going into the abroad location. So that's what was gonna happen. So that was a shift. Uh, but <clears throat> back to casting, which leads into someone's next question. Uh, this is a Money Rebel says, Mr. J, how did you feel about the tech theme during casting? Would you rather have done the gimmicky castings with the themes or the more straightforward ones, which is you, Miss J and Tyra and the contestants? And and, I, and she went on to talk about, you know, this, this idea because J was, Alpha J, I was Beta J, Tyra was Tyra Bot. It was this corny sci-fi moment. I thought she was really a mannequin when it first opened and she when was- When the door all, opened. She was super beat and she was there. And I was like, we were all genuinely like, Tyra, wait, that's not really Tyra, that's a mannequin. And that, and that bitch started moving. And then she started moving. <laughs> Lost it. I was like, <laughs> I'm really in, like in front of someone who, I grew up watching like her and Naomi were the reasons I learned how to walk and way before mm. I trained girls in high school and college to walk based on seeing them walk in BS. Yeah. That old lingerie company we don't wear anymore. Or Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I was just like, I can't believe this is real. Like, I What was did you think of the whole casting? Because you, you, if you grew up watching the show, we had like standard, we had done 10 cycles. So this was the, supposed to usher in the new decade of Top Model. Uh, and I was obsessed with it. You like the whole sci-fi thing? Number one, your lace was unclockable. I see oh, 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 yeah, we got to talk about that because people sure. think that was my hair. They're like, your hair was long. Would you ever grow it back out? It was a full lace front wig. You down fronted to my, my hairline, which is real crazy. And um, yeah, you couldn't clock it. It was cut real, real, real short. I see, I see in certain light, I can't clock mine, but when I look up, I clock it. So if you see me keep doing that. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> but I was obsessed because you have to understand, I was a super top model fan from the beginning. Mm. So everything was exciting to me. Like I wasn't one of those girls that, that didn't, like I knew everything. So for me to see something like that, coming from the shelter and only seeing the ballroom scene as any kind of extravagant thing in real life. I, I love futuristic anything. So yeah. and was, that was crazy when they, we did the first cut, you guys had to put your hands, we were, it was right in front of Jane. I had to put the hand on the scanner. It said access, grant, access uh, granted or access denied. Ooh, where's your heart thumping? It was crazy. No, because I knew if I was the one that all the way. Okay. Yes, yes. Oh my God, that is hilarious. But that was a crazy, you know, that whole theme shoot, I don't know. I, if I had to critique it though, aside from it being corny, the main the panel room was like all white. And then the way they shot it with all that reflective white, it threw the camera diopters off. So all of us look under lit. It was like crazy. And then we had to be, I don't know if you saw, we beamed in and out of like our oh, yeah. deliberations. It was so cheese, but. I, from, from this perspective, uh, Loved it. I love it. People are writing corny as fuck because it totally I, was. I love cheesy. One of my favorite shows right now is uh, Star Girl. It just came out and it's super like, like campy. I love camp. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, by the way, there's so many questions for you. I want to try and get to them. Um, well, this one is not specifically, but you can chime in on this. This is from Ivan, who said, I still don't understand how Lauren Bree was eliminated so early in the competition when it was clear she was a winner. 
from the beginning. Don't get me wrong, I love McKee and she's a great winner and I love her too, but this was Lauren Bree's cycle. And I noticed that you chimed right into this person's comment here and you just were, really? So what's the tea on that? Well, first of all, I love, I haven't seen her in years, but I remember one time in New York, she came to New York and we had- Who's she? You mean Lauren Bree? Yeah, Lauren Bree. Mm. I actually, and I had lunch one time with McKee and Sheena together. But uh, I love Lauren Bree. But honestly, if we're going to talk, I should have been the winner. If we're going to say who should have been the winner. <laughs> okay. But you won, though. Look at you. No, Look at no. you today. You won. I, I, looking back, I looked at episode one yesterday, the first episode, but then I fell asleep because I was like, I want to watch it. I was like, girl, you need to get some rest. But I, I do think that hot air balloon shoot was really cool. And she's really, really photogenic. But I just think that McKee was just the overall package. I think because she was packaged just kind of like a tomboy and not mm -hmm. so girly like some of the other girls. And honestly, no shade, not a blonde. That's a whole nother conversation because people mm -hmm. always just want to see a blonde, white girl, blue eyes as a winner. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, sometimes there are pe people who are better for the, for the role. And, mm -hmm. McKee, and also McKee was my roommate. And she oh, was okay. She was cool. Um, there, you had some so you had so many sentimental moments on the show. You know, a, another one of these comments here. I, I questions for you. I want to try and find it. I, I, I'm not going to jump out of order. But it was talking about Anna Lee uh, and uh, that and moment. And I'll find the question specifically. So because a lot of people ask this question, but you can talk about it. Oh, here. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Oh, well, no, it's not the question. But it, basically, this one of the scenes that I personally love seeing went on air. And I have to give props to Tyra, uh, Ken Mock, you know, the producers. They really fought for this moment with the network. And that is that moment with you in the bathroom and Anna Lee. And you asked Anna Lee to come in to distract you while you're giving yourself your injections. I have tea. What's the tea? Go ahead. Okay, are y'all ready for this? This is uh -oh. I think I'll I've go but it's never really been picked up. Oh, 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 this is tea. Oh, sip it, sip it. This is tea. So, um, being in a shelter, at the time I was taking hormone injections, like on the show, um, but right before I left to do the show, I had to give myself a hormone shot. I saw blood and I fainted. So two weeks later when I had to do my next shot, I fainted again. So I was in a process of figuring out how to switch from shots to pills because I just couldn't handle it when I went on the show. So when I went on the show, I knew that if I, like it's a chance I, I could faint and I was still so new to transitioning. I didn't want to do that on camera. And I was like, if I fainted on camera, I would, I would hate if I fainted on camera because I was giving myself course, a shot. Of course. So I asked them, hey, when we do our next photo shoot, can the medic administer my shot? Because we have medics on site, yeah. Mm -hmm. said, of course, of course. Photo shoot came around. Oh no, the medic can't do it today, next day. Oh no, the medic, and at the time I was just starting, so I didn't know like, mm. if it's fine. But I was, I was so new, so I was like, oh my gosh, I, I need to take my shot. So it went on for days, right? Mm -hmm. and, like, I see where this is going. My shot, and then it came back to me on the back phone, back phone ring up for people who don't know, it's the phone in the house that you guys don't see is how production talk to us so they don't interfere um, on camera. They call up, yes. Hey, so the medic won't be able to do your shot. And I was like, what do you mean the medic can't do my shot? Mm -hmm. they, like a week ago, they was gonna do my shot. Like, I need, a, I need to do it. They said, yeah, you have to do your shot. So it'd be mm -hmm. better bring one of the girls to be in there with you so you don't faint. And I was just like, Mm. Wow. See, I did not know that. You have never told, over the years, you've never told me that moment. I mean, it was a moment for me that kind of, I, I kind of just lost. So I honestly didn't want to do it on camera because I felt mm. like me being trans in itself was already a, a big, it, it just was what it was. Like I was there as a trans woman. So like that's enough of an impact. I don't need mm. to do, I don't need to do a hormone shot on camera. So I never personally, mm do it on camera one because i was scared i was gonna faint and then two i just don't want to do it on the fucking camera you know so i under yeah and you know i did not know this story yeah. so everyone watching because isis you and i have talked how many times and hung out over the years you've never told me this moment 
Yeah. Uh, obviously, I'm not involved in that. I do know about the bat phone because they have to let you guys know things like you got to be ready at this time or this or that so that, that and the camera operators and the sound operators in the room are not allowed to talk to you yeah. at all. Uh, I just kept looking at him with the blonde hair, the tall buck. I was like, oof. Uh -huh. <laughs> But, but you know that, but I, can I tell you how I perceived that moment? Um, I did not know the level of manipulation. Am I going to say it surprises me? No. Uh, that, I will say, there was a lot of that. But what I loved about watching that moment um, was, and I think about shows like today, we have shows like Euphoria, where in the first episode, oh. we get to see, and that's actually how, if you're smart enough, that's how we learn that character is trans by doing the injection of hormones. And so I kind of feel like you were kind of paving the way for helping people understand the level of commitment, yeah. uh, that this is not a choice. This is who you are and this is what you have to do to be who you are. And so for me, that moment and seeing that moment on TV, I, that is so inspiring to so many people. And Anna Lee, who I already, you know, my experience with Anna Lee for the whole cycle, which I'll get into because there's tons of questions about her. I already loved working with her, I loved her spirit, her level of acting. You, I, I, it's no surprise she's a huge star today, but um, she just, I loved her. She, she just uh, sent me a nice long message in my DMs because I've been posting a lot about Black Lives Matter and you know, Black Trans Lives mm -hmm. Matter. She sent me a really, long and we haven't we ran into each other it's so weird i run into, used to run into all the girls in new york we ran into each other in new york one time and we were so close and i know she was off doing her thing and i'm off doing my thing but yeah she's always been so supportive and her acting is amazing and she's just still so she's so genuine to who she was yeah and, and she yeah i i love that she was there with me i love that somebody did it with like was there for me but yeah. i knew at that point I didn't want to do shots anymore, but uh, like myself, um, so it sucked. But in the grander scheme of how so many thousands of people over the years told me how how me transitioning and, and being on TV has affected them, and even doing the shot, uh, I see it. And you know, if I have to be the, you know, I, I don't I don't regret it. I mean, mm -hmm. it sucked because I was just nervous about fainting on TV. Of course, like, of course, I, I think would anyone would. Yeah. Um, and before Wendy Williams. Yeah, yeah. I, I just wouldn't have wanted that because I look crazy when I, you know, if I faint. Yeah. And, but yeah. and, speak, and speaking of, because there's, again, I don't know how we're going to get to all these questions. But so <laughs> Lady Hex Noir asks, how were you, Jay, um, I guess because if, if I knew, if I was aware of the awful transphobia from the other contestants, Clark in particular sticks out. And there are a lot of conversations about Clark. And I think you could talk about it as well, Isis, but what people don't understand is, so yes, on photo shoot days, I'm there the longest with you guys. I spend the most time with you guys and I do other things. I'm there makeovers and all that stuff. So I get to know you all really, really well. But unfortunately, even on like the photo shoot day, I'm out working with every girl. So I don't see the house stuff, even the back chatter of the photo shoot stuff that's going on until it goes on air. I don't get to see that, a lot of that. This one. So, but yeah, so people asked about that. And specifically, here's another one. If Clark was so, well, they go on to say, if Clark was so religious, this is from Johnny Vazmar. If Clark was so religious and so against ISIS, why was it okay for Clark to be kissing Alina? But talk about what happened in that voting photo shoot, which was so funny because it's 2008. So that was a voting year, 2008. Yeah. So I'm like, oh my God, that's 12. That's like literally, 2008 that's 12 years um, ago I'm like geez no I, wonder I like I look at the outfits by the way Woo! I was looking but, at my outfits um, number one looking back I forgot yesterday when I looked at episode one I forgot how amazing Mar I wish Marjorie had more confidence because when I first saw her in the house I knew she was a shoe in and one especially with that short plat I would have kept her hair platinum Marjorie but, knew, knew how to work her ass off on set. Like, there, And by the way, even that windmill photo shoot that you see way towards the end, I think it's the episode she gets eliminated in, 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 in Amsterdam, where they're in the clogs and stuff. She, the, the photo's actually great, and her photos were good. I think the problem that all the judges had, and even the clients had at the castings, was that at the end of the day, 
Marjorie was, her anxiety took over and that was just not gonna really work in the business. But in terms of her product, can I tell you, Marjorie was like, I always knew I'd get a great photo out of Marjorie, honestly. When I remember, uh, I'm sorry, I know we're gonna talk about Clark and we're gonna talk about the voting booth, but I just wanna say, when I went to the semis, I was going to the airport and going through, and you know, it's like, my first time on a flight, I had my shades, I had those big ass earrings and that clip on ponytail. I was walking through like, bitch, I'm, a, I'm about to go. And I saw her getting on and it was all these people. And I looked at her, I said, this bitch is gonna be a semifinals. It was mm -hmm. when I got there, I just looked at her and I was like, she's gonna be on her watch. Mm -hmm. I, she just looked like it. And when I went in the house, I was like, this is the biggest competition. Like, I, I'm like, she's a standout. And I, yeah. I do confidence but she was she was always adorable and I got her personality because I'm such a big personality but also parts of me is so awkward and introverted so I actually people don't know that but I actually get that the difference is when it's time to work I know how to cut it on mm -hmm. give you this but when it's off and when I'm a, like I'm more like Marjorie so um, talk about the voting photo shoot and I know we have a ton of ton of questions for you so we'll try and keep it short because okay. i want to get to some of the people but that was a moment that was that that was like I, I had no clue i was way on the other side of the room how kind of fucked up the, the kind of the shit they were saying i really didn't even know so i think i don't know if the part of editing was like i don't recall if it was actually when we were shooting or mm -hmm. right before we actually start snapping and they were doing test shots but either way i remember like I can't, I'm in a competition. I can't say, hey, Mr. J or, you know, whoever, can you guys tell them to stop? So I kind of just like, because huh, I'm used, you know, I have to, these girls are not going to intimidate me. But I was like, yo, you know, chill. And that's why I'm just like, can y'all like chill? Yeah. I, the big thing, because it's like, it's my moment. This is my first photo shoot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so it, it sucked. I think watching it back, I didn't realize how much the girls were really saying about me. And if I knew that, I would have been, you know, more of a bitch. But even though, like, I did uh, I did confront Hannah after the pool, but they cut that out. I guess they, I just have to look, like, so, like, mousy and scared. But I did confront her. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, I just didn't know to what extent that the girls were really, and especially behind me, if you're, like, mocking me like as a joke but then you're going around and saying calling saying america's next mo top model is not gonna be a man or a drag queen i'm like oh even behind me like oh yeah. to that you know i'm just like oh y'all trying to mess me up like stop like chill i'm in my moment but it's like oh wait one of y'all is like for real for real like disrespectful to me it, like, it's real it was really disrespectful it's hard to watch that stuff you know i you know obviously seen the cycle and, and, and I recently just kind of went through it. And, you know, it is hard to see that and to think of where we are today, you know, even with this world and everything that's going on right now. But the one, one of the kind of uh, hopes that I have, because I've seen so many successful trans models actually in the business kind of around the world. Um, and, you know, again, I think that was a great start. I mean, but what, what you said so eloquently several times was that was just the energy at the time. And people were trying to, it wasn't just catty girls because our industry in general, and forget just models, people always talk behind your back. You know, uh, I, I already know, I've already heard it. Um, you know, I have my book coming out and people are like, oh, he wrote a book. And da, 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 da. Like, and I've heard it through people. And then they're all pretending to be my face. Oh, can't wait to read. And then I hear what they say behind my back. Um, it is what it is. You have to turn, you have to push it out. You have to do you. And that's one of the things that I've always admired in you is that you do you. And I look at you today and I see, and you're just such a success. And that's that you're the story. You're the proof that you have to kind of push that shit aside and do you. Um, I just wish I knew more of it was going on, but I didn't. So, yeah. And I think, um, I mean, I don't, I know you, we have more questions to get through. I think a lot of people put so much of it on Tyra when there is a whole team back there making decisions. And also, mm -hmm. like I said, people want to say so much 12 years later, but reality is 12 years later, 90% of the comments feedback to me was death threats, was uh, you deserve yeah. to burn hell, was you don't need to be, all the, all the feedback that we are getting now I'm like, if that's how you felt, where was this at when I needed it? Because I was isolated alone and got off the show still homeless. Yeah. You know, 
feel like and went to sleep on people's floors and stuff like because there were not gigs for me yet because I was scared after I saw the show I didn't leave out the house for two weeks when mm, I first I can understand that it was the beginning of cyberbullying mm. it's like media takeout at the time and it, it it was a lot. So when people say, oh, Tyra this, Tyra that, I'm like, no, that's where people was. Number one, hold the girls accountable. But number two, hold yourselves accountable because in society, mm -hmm. America at least, that's the way we was. And it sucks because to think of where we are now, yes, we progressed not enough. But but it's like you can't hold people accountable for how the mass was feeling because nobody can tell me. I, I dealt with it. I'm the one yeah. who got feedback directly and I tell you out of a hundred comments it was maybe five at the time or ten that were giving with everybody else all the love and support that everybody's given now and mm -hmm. I had to absorb that and deal with it it was nobody to talk to it was no blueprint for coming off to deal with how I dealt with it and somehow I, I mean I've dealt with years of depression in and out but I just managed to keep going because I know there's more for me out there exactly and driving force and also wanted to take care of my mom that has been a driving force to me not crumbling to the comments and to how even the industry has taken it because we're just now in the last few years giving trans American women the opportunity to be on covers mm -hmm. to series regular roles mm -hmm. I've been fighting for for 12 years to get we're just now within the last few years getting to that point and when I say last few years I mean two or three and look and look at and all the love down below everyone saying preach and yes and you belong and 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 I love that we're seeing all this love go by right now just even talking about your journey and what with all the thing that I think about which is a blessing is what doesn't break you makes you stronger Absolutely. and like I know you today and I look at you sitting there and you just you radiate just such positivity and uh, beyond the gorgeousness um but okay yeah. so Sorry, I'm sorry, guys, if I'm long-winded. I'm used to getting a microphone and saying, hey, get on stage and speak for 45 minutes to the audience. So yeah. I, I can I can talk. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, let's dive into this one question. So Mo, uh, Mo underscore peak says, clearly when Samantha was walking blindfolded and pulled up her shirt, it was a mistake. Was Jeremy Scott really upset or did production tell him to fake it? uh just to create drama so they're talking about the jeremy scott fashion show which you participated in oh you got tic with the blindfolds let me set it up girls today you're gonna be walking with blindfolds um uh jeremy scott from what i understand and especially when it got to judging i mean he was annoyed he was definitely annoyed and he's a bit of that personality what what's your tea so my if anybody who don't know my background is fashion design okay mm -hmm. Uh, so as a, a, a number one, I feel like I should have won that challenge, but I'm happy to Jocelyn. Because you turned it. You turned that challenge. And Sheena, because I, I feel like we were the three strongest walkers. And the fact that I still got to go and do the shoot, I, I'm not even mad. But I feel like as a designer, if you know the way your garment is supposed to look going down the runway, you're very particular. I'm very particular about my garments. That's why I barely put people in them, which is a problem. Mm -hmm. But... Mm -hmm. I'm very particular about how my garment's supposed to look. He told her ahead of time. He did. Not do this because it's going to come up and that's not how the garment is supposed to be presented. I can understand as a designer, like this is your work and his garments are very avant-garde. But if he doesn't want a panty showing, then he doesn't want a panty or thigh, you know, or stocking showing. She just and got nervous. Let's be real. She got nervous. She wasn't thinking. It's really, and I understand that. So I understand that side of it. She did. She just got nervous. But he did tell her beforehand. I believe it's even in the edit. He tells her during the fitting, "Don't do that on the runway." And then she does I, it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, if a designer tells me don't do something. Even if I'm not, like, it doesn't, I'm going to make sure, and I, anybody can attest for this, even for acting or for modeling, I feel like, I can feel like I'm the best person. I'm still going to practice it a million times before I do it. Mm -hmm. so, but um, I will tell my personal feeling, um, I do feel like you were robbed from that challenge. That's, that's just me. That's just my thing. Um, and then another, there was another question. I'm trying to find it. Uh, oh, I find the person who asked the question about, or, or said, talked about Anna Lee. It was, Miss Natalie Ford 14 is the one who said she ended up loving Annalise so much and it was so heartwarming when she helped you with the hormone injection. So I just did want to uh, bring that up. Um, so 
here's a quick question, which is easy to answer. Junior LA24 asks, how is it possible for Jocelyn to audition 30 times in only 11 cycles? Jocelyn was just talking. You know, you know when you get nervous, you're on stage, you just found out you're announced. She's like, oh my God, I've auditioned like 30 times. Well, I she feel didn't. like, I think she went to, like that was back then, like making a band when they have it in different like areas. I think she actually drove around to different audition, like different states, if I'm not mistaken. But she didn't really do 30 though. She was just kind of exaggerating the number the same way like Miss J says, okay, it's time for cycle 384. You know what I mean? Like you kind of just exaggerate the number. I don't, I don't think she, she, she really, uh, I don't think she really meant that. Um, just had a baby. She's still so vibrant and like positive and bubbly. We had lunch late last year before she had the baby, but she was, had her baby bump still. Uh -huh. And yeah. So oh, sweet. Cool. Oh. Well, so spelled PH, but fucky O drawings <laughs> says, uh, what are your thoughts on Paulina asking Sheena whether her breasts were real or not in front of everyone at panel? I mean, were you, were you still on panel? Were you still in the competition when she asked that? I remember the moment. Yeah, because I remember, I think Sheena for the high air balloon is when she came back and said they were fake. Yes, yes, yes. Um, yes. Yeah. I don't really see, number one, they go with her body. She's a curvy Amazon. I mean, I don't really think it was, it mattered that much. You know, Sheena already has a body type of like a fit curvy woman. Um, I think, I think it, the proportion wise, it goes with her body. I don't really think it was necessary, but also, I don't well, know. Well, I don't know. I, I don't know if it was not necessary. I think it was important to, um, well, so to, for people who don't remember that moment, she asked her the question. She goes, are they fake? She says, no. Then she goes back to stand with the girls. And then as Tara's about to wrap up the elimination, she says, actually, I have something to say. And she comes forward to say, you know, I want to come up with the truth. These are breast implants. I did them when they were young. When I was young, it was a mistake. Now, you know, I think that the issue that maybe Paulina had, and I can't speak for her, was, and it's interesting that you say it fit her body type. See, I think she might have wanted to be maybe a size smaller. Um, she could still probably get the implants, but I think that's what threw off her body. I think because a lot of, I don't know how it works, but I feel like a lot of doctors try to overbalance to hips, which gives like this different hourglass figure, which kind of takes it away from modeling. That's not to say you can't have a bigger chest size and model. It's just how it works with your body. And I think that's what Paulina was maybe talking about. I don't know. But like, what is she going to say? Like, oh, they don't fit your body. You should go small. Or like, are you about to pay for my anesthesia? Are you about to pay for me to go back under? Like <laughs> right now, if you don't like it, you don't like it. I personally don't think that she had to say it because I don't think it's nobody's business. You see, I have these big ass titties. You either like them or you don't. You don't like them. Oh, I think your boobs are too big for that. I don't think it matters if they were yeah. Because yeah. say they were and honestly even if she said no that's still her business because you do not need to disclose she didn't have to disclose it she did it on her own like era now where people celebrate it more because it's like oh it's for some people it's a status thing to talk about what procedures you have but yeah. it, i'm so like I'm, <laughs> I, um but but i do feel like it wasn't necessary for her to say it and honestly if she said no they aren't they aren't fake I, and and even if it was a lot, that's still nobody's business. She should have just said True. that. But also, while we're on but our industry, but our industry is like that, and that's one of the things that I kind of dislike about the industry, which does bleed over even into the entertainment industry. They kind of micro nitpick everything down to the point that I know actors, um, very big actors um, and, and well known, who talk about kind of the things that get nitpicked, and so you talk about people like. Oh, you're too thin. Oh, you're too, it's at first you're too thin or you're too big or you're too this or you're too that and too this. And it's always based on somebody's opinion. Yeah, I'm just gonna, somebody said my audio was going out. So I'm just gonna put these in if that might help. Okay, cool. I mean, I can still, I can hear you perfectly. Um, someone, Mo underscore peak also asked, what happens right after the winner is chosen? Are the eliminated contestants still there at this point? If so, are they behind the scenes or even in the same building as the judges of this final two? So in, so it's kind of divided into two kind of 
portion, so to speak. So when we're domestic in the United States, um, when you're eliminated, what happens? Do you want to tell what your experience is? Um, I just want to say real quick, somebody read me for having a cord. Yes. And I have an Android. So what's your problem? I love it. Yes. I, I'm a forgetful person. If I had those little AirPods, Air, AirPods I would lose them in it. a week. So don't judge me. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> um, okay, so oh, I don't. I want to come back to Sheena because I don't know if somebody wants to talk about her, but I have tea on the makeover because I know people were asking. Oh, there is a, there is a question about the makeover. Um, I do have it here. Um, I'll try and find the person who asked it, but let's talk about your. I'll find that question while you uh, about oh, being here sequestered. Yeah. yeah, here it is. Yes, sequestered after you're eliminated. So after you're eliminated, generally um, they keep they keep the first seven girls, the first half girls sequester so that means you don't go back home you still don't get your phone you still don't go back home yet you are kept in like a hotel but it's like a, a long a long sand hotel you know one mm -hmm. of those like bougie ones you stay there usually you're paired up and i remember right after me uh i think clark got eliminated right after she was supposed to be my roommate but they i don't think she wanted to be so they they put somebody else with me mm -hmm. but um yeah, the first half of the girls, you're sequestered. And that's just because you're going to be a decoy model. If they need you for decoy work, if you're going to, if they're going to be filming something out, out in the open. Like you my know, segments, they, especially yeah. my segments, because I was so recognizable at the time. <laughs> so people knew when, if they saw me with a bunch of girls and cameras were shooting top models. So yes. And, and did you know the name that we actually, you said, the, we didn't call them decoys. They were in, in, in production, they used the word bogeys. Did you know that? It's no, that word is so ugly. It's like, it's I don't like it. So it's just like, ugly. I don't like the word hoagie talking about a sandwich. It's just something about the sound that I can't, yeah, I can't get down horrible. with. It's horrible. It's <laughs> horrible. But basically what we did is, and the way it would happen is, and it was always very hard for me because I get so close to all of you guys, was the fact that like I would shoot, there'd be a camera here and then the contestants that are left. And then on the other side of the camera, going that way, mm -hmm. are Be like the, the other decoys. girls. <laughs> and so that's so if anyone took a picture out on the street of me doing an introduction with girls, then what happens is they don't have anything because they take a picture and they get all the girls. So all they have are the top 14. So except for all stars what happened, but that's a whole different. I'm not even going to get into it. Yeah, we're going to save just, all stars for you, though. Yeah, because I'm we, just happy tea. I got to go to Greece. I'm just gonna say that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there's um, and there's lots going on. But she, let's talk about Alina's makeover, because Stephen Sanisco asked Alina's? during the makeover. Oh. Yeah, Alina's makeover. Uh, you because you were sitting. Who's who's? Oh, you want to talk about Sheena's makeover too? No, I mean Alina. I just remember her. Like everybody, I loved her photos, but she was very passive aggressive and and very. I don't know the word for it. Like looking back at it and knowing her in the competition, I was like, she seemed so nice in your face, but she was the one who would sit back and get people talking and then keep quiet. So when the cameras catch it, you see the other girls, but it's like, this bitch is the one that started this, but you <laughs> never get her on camera. She was very strategic. I would say yeah, that she, she was, was very strategic. And I personally loved her makeover. I remember having mine's like, Are you guys- Oh, like, the red with the red on yeah, it? Yeah. You guys were like, what do you think? And I was just like, I turned around like, I mean, I get this a, norm, a natural weave all the time. You know, yeah. I was kind of sad. I wanted to get my hair cut off or something crazy. something crazy. But I guess when you want something crazy, you don't get it. I noticed that. But oh, um, so and someone was asking so below, I didn't I didn't answer the question fully was about what happens abroad. So abroad, the girls oh. who fly abroad have to stay abroad, too. They're eliminated and they're put in a hotel, although yeah. literally their wrangler then takes them out. They get to go sightseeing and do fun mm. things because well, I can't abroad. wait for all stars. It's so oh, much because oh, Yeah, all stars. There's so much tea. Isis is coming back for oh. all stars because she's like, oh, I got lots to say. I got uh, tea all the way through. OK, <laughs> tea all the way through. Um, OK, so about Sheena, for people asking about Sheena, mm. This is tea because they didn't show most of this. The, her, her, they were talking about makeover day right now. Yeah, yeah, for mm -hmm. Sheena, for her makeover, because mm -hmm. Sheena was sitting right next to me. Mm -hmm. So when they started Sheena, I think Tyra wanted to take Sheena really, really, really light blonde or something along the lines of like just blonde. I don't remember that, but okay, um, maybe. But did so, she have black dye or something in her hair? They couldn't budget? What, what they didn't realize, or, and they was like, well, you should have told us is that Sheena had black henna dye or some type of plant-based like long-lasting yeah, yeah. dye yeah so they kept trying to lift her hair 
And she was like, I was burning and screaming. And people saw that like, oh, you know, she's burnt. Oh, she's being dramatic. What she didn't know, which I had to tell her, I was looking down and I was like, the hairstylist, huge clumps of her hair came out and the stylist <laughs> tried to kick it under the seat. And I'm looking, I'm getting my hair, I'm like, and I'm like, <laughs> and I'm trying to look at Sheena and I'm not trying to draw attention because uh -huh. everybody just thinks she's being dramatic, but I'm just like, oh shit, like clumps of her hair because they was trying to go so light. And I'm looking and I'm, and Sheena had like long luscious hair. And mm -hmm. I was looking and she's just, and I'm like, Sheena. And she's like, what? I'm just like, girl, look at girl, your, hair on, the your floor. hair on the floor. It was like that type of like, it was like with blonde pieces and like, like really, really, really straight, like breaking off. It was so bad. So what they did for her makeover after they finished and got it to however like they was going to, she ended up having way, a lot of short pieces. So they put, I believe it was the kind with the adhesive tape. That's when it just started getting popular. Oh, like the, the strips of, of hair that like were the glue that was, weave. yeah it's like a glue well weave. well not well with the adhesive it's like a sticker it's like a sticker of oh, a whole flat piece that. of flat piece of um chunky highlights they had highlights and lowlights in it so they put those all in her hair especially in the areas that it was cut short mm -hmm. i mean did it not cut short broken off to give it her hair like the like highlights and lowlights but that was really because her like, hair had broken her hair was broken off. breaking off that's Ooh. why and all oh I'm going back to All Stars again. Oh, see, you got to keep that one for yourself. Um, someone, but but wrote, yeah, hair so tape. Some, Oscar said it's hair tape. Oh, hair tape. See, look at Oscar yeah. James. To see, and that's the thing. So Oscar, like, because my hair is like actually like, it's long, and everyone goes, "How do you get your hair so silver? Same. Does it break?" It's because, <laughs> yeah, uh huh. But yeah, Mr. Oscar James is like the master. He knows how to do it so that, you know, you just get a little, he just does the root. But I have had times where I've had to be in another country and I'm working and Oscar's not there. And we go through with strict instructions and someone else does my hair. And I've literally had literally someone doing my hair, supposedly like Oscar does it, which is flawless. And then I've looked down in the bowl and my hair is lying in the bowl. I've had my hair broken off to like nothing. So I've learned. I don't do that anymore. So I know that. Uh, <laughs> hey, I just yeah. want to shout out to Hey Bianca. She's in here. Hey, my girl, Hope Giselle. She's um, in here. Um, okay, so so well, I know we want to keep going. You, so I here's another momentum. question. Here's another question. Um, I think we talked about this, but this is interesting. So this is uh, B Samuels 88 said, what advice would you have? Um, Sorry, what advice would you give a person re-watching this season and potentially feeling triggered because of the disproportionate spotlight given to ignorance <clears throat> around the trans experience, which led to a lot of problematic language and microaggressions? It might be hard to reconcile praising the show for being progressive while also intentionally centering this dang these dangerous attitudes that promote violence against trans people. I think that's a very insightful question. It's kind of deep. How would you answer that? Because there is a whole new audience watching yeah. the show right now for the first time and going, wait, what the fuck? They're like, wait, what? What would you yeah, say Yeah, I mean, I think, I know even my best friend, Corey, he's the biggest top model fan and he just went back to try to watch it. And he said like he had to cut it off. It, it's it's kind of weird because number one is not like, it's like a Harvey Weinstein type situation where it's something done in the dark and comes to light, mm. right? This is, this is stuff that happened on national TV. This is stuff that was um, okayed. This is stuff that was praised at the time. This is also something that happened 12 years ago. So I think we have to continue to take that in consideration that this is not something that was dark and light and that this is not something that was done in the dark. And it also was a bigger reflection of where people were, I mean, it's still a lot of people like that, but where mm -hmm. people were at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember uh, Kristen Seriano was saying like hot tranny mask on Project Runway around the same era. And I remember being so triggered by that, but nobody said anything. And then after it, it became like, oh, the word tranny is a derogatory term. Don't use it. Anybody watching, if you don't know that, don't use the word tranny. It's a of derogatory course. term. Um, but I think that that's just where we were at the time. I can say for me, it is still hard for me to watch because I'm watching it like, oh, I feel mm -hmm. sorry for that girl. I was like, oh, shit, that's mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, I think that's why it's important now to, to have the conversations uh, with your family about why it's problematic now. And I think that's why it's so important to have more 
positive representations of trans people on TV and in yes. media now because uh, we continue to see where we were at a certain place. And if we see people on TV now, when they know the things that are problematic, when they know the things that would be triggering, we can continue to get better and have more positive conversations with our family and friends based exactly. on shows that are happening now. You can still exactly. go back and enjoy it for what it was. And it sucks some moments. It sucks, I know, because nobody know it more than me. Sure, but, sure. But to watch a show like Pose Now, and I know it's not, it's, it's not reality, but to watch a show like Pose Now and to see these people living authentic lives as positive people with struggles, with happy mm -hmm. moments, with love and 360 characters, human beings. It's, yeah, exactly. to, show the, to show fully realized characters, that's going to make a bigger impact because it's happening right now. So what I think is important with... Uh, is that in reality TV now, we continue to have these trans characters and also on scripted shows, but also to call things out now because it's going to be called out versus then. Because mm -hmm. if not, like a show now, if it's not, it will, it will get like boycotted and canceled. Of course, you know? of course, of course, yeah. And um, I think you said, I mean, I think that was a really great question and I, I love your answer because it's true. We need more of that for more understanding. And it's the same thing with several cultures. They said, you know, if we go back further and look at uh, derogatory words against just, you know, gay culture. And I'm going yeah. like way back, you know, there, there, there were those derogatory words. We know what's, I just, I think it's most important to see, as you said, both in script, in the scripted world and in the reality world, just seeing these 100 and kind of percent 360 yeah. characters as just real human beings. Um, another question you were talking about the photo. This was another one from Fuckio Drawings, <laughs> spelled P H. Uh, uh, who came up with the hot air balloons photo shoot con uh, concept? It was one of my favorites in top model photo shoot history. Uh, the pictures ended up looking amazing. Lauren Bree's picture blew me away. Um, actually, that was that. You was have tea. It was not my concept about that. No, I have some tea around that photo shoot. I they remember wanted, that was crazy. <laughs> they wanted to do this hot air balloon photo shoot. They said, we want to do a hot air balloon. How do we make it fashionable? I was like, really? Like you want them in the hot air balloon? So like we came up, so I kind of had to add a layer to it. Like what if they're on the rope? And I wanted this feeling that looked, you know, it was always my job to how do we make it look more like fashion? Like someone yeah. who knows nothing about fashion pitches a concept, then we got to make it look like fashion. So um, yeah. It was on the ladder. The problem was the balloon really did. You guys were supposed to be on the yeah. balloon, but it was flying all over the place. It was too the, dangerous. When we got out that truck, okay, guys, a little behind the scenes. We get out the huge van, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, like a huge-ass hot air balloon. I'm like, wow, this is crazy. I can't wait, though. I see the ladder, but the next you see the balloon is just like... Uh, why did my intro I, from the balloon, actually? And, I was in the basket. Yeah, I remember. And I was looking, I was just like, that do not look too safe. <laughs> and the next thing you know, you came back and said, hey, you know, so unfortunately, it's so windy right now. We have to just improvise. And I was kind of disappointed because I was like, mm -hmm. damn, that's, that's, but at the end, it was one of my favorite. I mean, I wish it was a shot of me more like with my body longer. Yeah, can we talk but about that shoot, girl? Let's talk I, about that shoot. Let me talk about my frustration around that shoot. I thought, honestly, if any was gonna, anyone was going to land that shoot, it was going to be you. And the thing is, you knew how much like I was rooting for you, not to borrow mm -hmm. other people's words. I was rooting for you. <laughs> uh, but I was rooting for you. And I wanted to see you go so far in this competition. And, and you and I have talked about that over the years. Yeah. But that photo shoot especially, I was like, girl, if you don't get this shit together, what happened that day? I, I just got to talk about it because I remember I was like, Oh, I wanted like the. Best, I mean, I best personally thought I personally thought I was eating it up. <laughs> I saw I can't. I mean, this other shoot. Oh, we have other shoots to talk about. Oh, okay. Well, what are they? Talk about to, the other shoots. Talk how about much other more shoots. time do we have? Well, we can go. We can go long. People are listening. They're loving. Okay. They got questions. We got so many um, questions. I here. personally, I personally thought that I did good. Be well, in my head. I wasn't thinking about my whole body, and it's still new, new to you know sure. taking photos. I was thinking. I'm in the middle of the box. I'm like framing my face. That's what I was thinking in my head. I'm like, oh, this shit is going to be bomb. I'm framing my face. I'm going to do something different than everybody else. I'm not thinking like about the, the rest of it. the whole body and the movement. Yeah. And, and then yeah. and then also the dress, it was hard to kind of put my foot over it because it was so long. So I was just like, okay, so I'm just going to be here and frame. Boom. Oh, oh my God. And, 
and, and it was that hard because it was the so many good different. shots. Like yeah, so many it, people, well, I, I went back and looked recently. I was like, oh no, it was a lot of good shots. Like I can't even, what Sheena, can you say? Though. What about Sheena's shot? Do you remember that? Because Sheena, I That's remember, why her boobs was out. I mean, she had the straps and she was no, kind of- you know what off. she did? She gripped, she literally gripped onto the rung of the ladder with like her booty cheeks and was oh, like- Oh yeah, yes. Legs and arms free and hold up. I'm like, <laughs> girl, like- I thought whoa. it was smart, but I guess, you know, it, it came out like, you know, and that's when they kept saying, um, you know, she looks hoochie, hoochie, which I guess that was kind of a mess now, like thinking about it now, but- you know, she she's a she has ass and titties. Like, I'm sorry, it's it, but there's it's a way to be... model it. You know, I give Tyra credit for this because Tyra even said because you know Tyra's always been bigger on the top. You know what I mean? And she's been always <laughs> even curvy even when she was a top model. So yeah. the point is, there's a way to kind of model opposite and work it. And Tyra knows <laughs> if anyone knows how to do it, it's Tyra. She knows how to do it, right? You know? I'm looking at somebody saying, "Yeah, she was holding on with her butt cheek." <laughs> <laughs> she was literally. <laughs> Oh my God, I'm starting to get hot. Uh, so here's another question. Um, so this is from Strawberry09990. You're both so amazing. I have three questions. One, do you think the right winner was chosen? Two, do you think Anali should have gone, uh, should have moved forward over Sam? Yes. And specifically to Isis, has Hannah apologized to you for the pool incident? I know it could have been in editing, but I thought her reaction was rude. It wasn't in so editing. So let's start there. Oh, did she ever apologize? Um, well, when I confronted her, she, you know, she apologized then, but she kind of did the whole, oh, I'm a victim, mm -hmm. which is the whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, but I do feel like just recently, I feel like last year she reached out to me. I, I feel like she apologized. Okay. And she was just like along the lines of, oh, you know, I'm grown. And she wanted to like catch up but it didn't it didn't work out i don't know i guess our, our schedule but i'll give her props didn't. for i'll give her props for reaching yeah. out because that's, yeah. that's, that's that shows maturity but to the other questions do you think annalee should have been mo moved forward over sam i mean i absolutely. can tell you i was i was there <laughs> <laughs> absolutely tell us your feelings tell us your feelings um i was there so i can i can tell you it was really difficult for me um i totally got what sam brought to the table and she would land photos uh annalee her, her, first of all, she was incredible on camera. Her acting, even the kissing, kissing challenge, she always finds like the right um, kind of whatever internal dialogue she's got going on to make it mm -hmm. look believable. Annalie was oh. amazing. And Annalie yeah. is still 100%. She's like a huge, huge, huge success today. So mm -hmm. I think Annalie won. But at that time, it was really difficult for me, you know, with, with, that, with that group of, especially the final four, because I just, I felt like I wanted Annalie to move forward, but Sam was also nailing it. But then also Sam, when we did the whole kind of clogs photo shoot, I remember, I remember it vividly. She just was like complaining with her feet. She didn't want to, uh, like the photos were not great. Um, and yeah. literally it was her last seven frames where she nailed it. And, and, and that's where sometimes I always get kind of worried because in editing, and you know, I'm often, I'm there to help the girl get the best shot. So yeah. I often start off by hand-holding, helping, giving suggestions, but then some people need different kind of ways of kind of getting there. So with Sam, yeah. I knew I could get her there by giving her the harsh truth, giving it to her real, real hard, because then she buckles down and then she gives you what she wants. And I'm always concerned that like I come off looking like a dick because they edit it so weird. You don't see everything I say to somebody. So yeah. Um, but you were there. Did you ever think I was like a complete dick to everybody? Honestly, oh, oh, oh. She's like, no, oh. no, <laughs> no. Um, truth, but honestly. but I I do want to say, as far as the top three being a runway girl, I will say I was disappointed that uh, I love Sam and McKee. They were both so sweet mm -hmm. to me in the house. But I was disappointed that two girls that didn't couldn't walk made it to the final runway. Mm -hmm. Seeing like a. Yaya and an Eva or like a Naima or like so many final runway shows when a girl's I'm like oh my god with a walk and, and you're like mm -hmm. and then they have that hill it's like you have two girls that really don't walk can't walk and then they have the hill to run up I was watching can I tell like, you about the can I tell you about the runway because there's a question yes. here I'll find out who wrote it um and I'll, I'll give you a shout out but people were talking about the runway uh and they said it was their favorite runway of all seasons it was and how gorgeous. did I come up with it oh here it is it's from Fati underscore 
Iljuhari. I hope I pronounced that correctly for you. Um, uh, my question for you, Mr. J, what was your inspiration behind the file runway? It was my favorite in ANTM history. I worked so hard on that runway because all the runways, uh, that was, again, the one thing where production was like, we want nothing to do with it. You just tell us what you want. And I, I literally go create it because I bring all the creative teams on mm -hmm. but the runway. Even Tyra, I, I, don't, I didn't even run the runway by her. She would say, oh, don't, just surprise me. Just surprise me. I want to <laughs> show up and be surprised. So Tyra didn't even know what I was doing when it come to, came to all the final runways. And I felt like I had the girls walk on water before. I'd done this and uh. that. So with this, we were in Amsterdam and I thought, to be really honest with you, I, I, it was really strange. I was on a flight going to Amsterdam. I had not come up with the final runway yet. And I was going through, you know, the airplane movies and they have the classics and they yeah. have Willy Wonka. And I put it, it gave on. That. And, and that, somebody else said Dr. Seuss. It, yes, it was that was my amazing. inspiration. I wanted it like that. And it reminded me of some old couture <laughs> runway shows that were done in Paris way back. And we're starting to see come, some of that kind of creative come back. But I wanted this idea of seeing the dresses and the garments move as the girls ran up the hill, which yeah. I had to build different versions of that because I had to test the ramp and I had you know models in heels run and if it was too steep, we had to rebuild it. Because we built Ooh, the whole thing. I would hate to I would hate to be the model on the on the steepest one. <laughs> Ooh. She did slip, she did slip. Uh, and we had to re kind of change it and put sand in the paint so that it gave the girls grip. But I loved building the runway because people don't know what I do on my days off. That's what I do. I'm looking at locations, it, I'm building runways. Yeah. It has to be amazing to just say, oh, I have this idea for a full set and it come to life. Cause that, that yeah. was amazing. And I was just watching it like, I would have ate this runway up, You man. would have, I know I you would have. I would have ate that up. So, um, and Anna Lee would have ate it up too because Anna Lee, I loved her walk. I used to oh, remember yeah. her with her peace sign and her flowy, like. Well, do you want to know something? You want tea? Oh, she oh, walked so it because she walked oh, yeah. that runway. Oh, so yeah, here's the thing the, that you guys don't girls. know. So what we do, even for the final runway, because there's a real audience there, um, even though. The decoys. They, the, so we <laughs> have to bring in decoys. We don't bring back all the girls, but all the girls that actually fly abroad, they go through full hair and makeup, they get fully mm -hmm. fitted because we can't have them stick out either. And then I, of course I hire real models. So we have real models, the past contestants and the final two. And what I had to do with that runway in particular, because it was tricky, I had to space the decoys to like further out from the finalists because you could see them in all those cross shots. Yeah. And, uh, but yes, Anna Lee did walk that runway and I'm gonna and tell she you, Anna Lee served it. So of when course she came she did. back, because they all walked by me going in and out, I was like, Anna Lee, you are killing it but of course they cut it all out because, yeah but uh but she did kill it um yeah. here's a question that you could answer Alyssa okay. flowering sorry Alyssa flower twig asked when do the girls film their confessionals and the interviews for each episode the ones behind the green screen I think she's talking about specifically is that the last time they see the eliminated girl in the real panel when they leave or do they do it all along also how long does an eliminated girl have to have to pack their bags before they leave. So you can answer all of those. That just reminded me of um, when my best friend in the house, Brittany, who mm -hmm. I feel like shouldn't have went home so early, uh, when she got eliminated and our whole like, that, that was so emotional for me. Cause I was like, oh shit, how did I really become so close with someone that quick? Um, so the girl, when you go back to the house, so all the rest of the models after elimination, we're, we're put on ice, which means if we're not filming, you can't talk. To each so, other or anybody. Yeah, yeah, you can't talk at all. So we're in the van waiting, I think usually like up to an hour. Like elimin el elimination day is by itself literally like the longest day ever. It's literally like from day to night. So you're waiting in a van for the girl to go. And they honestly, I feel like I feel like they kind of let the girl have her time to like collect everything. It's not you're not really rushed in that moment, which I think is nice because it's a Were lot. Were you rushed in that moment? Did you feel rushed or did you just do I, your thing? The first, oh, just think about my outro and how with that crown on those earrings and those teeth, funny, before I had Invisalign. When I look back at that, I'm like, bitch, you have to do all that. <laughs> Every time I You're watched so it, I was funny. like, oh, like no. teeth, gap, cricket teeth, Girl, crown. don't worry. I, I look at half of what I wear. What do I need that, that show, crown stuff for? They give us to wear. And, and by the way, because it's so stupid because people don't realize <laughs> Miss J is six four, Nigel's six, four or six, five. They're tall. I'm six, one. 
but people mm -hmm. used to call me like like the little like I was short, short, short. So what they would do in in scenes where I was with Miss J or Nigel because they're six five, which is really really tall. I would wear like boots, like a boot with a heel, and then to cover the because it's not like now. I remember. I thought I thought that was your fashion. I didn't it's realize like, oh, that was. God, it was I only wore it for there. It's horrible. Whereas you need to wear a boot with like a skinny jean and you look like you're Dior. Yeah. Whereas then I wore these flare leg hideous jeans to cover the boot up. And okay, so one, I didn't, okay, I didn't so need that, it. Okay, so, okay, now I know that that wasn't you. Okay. Because you know. Ever, have you ever, even since you've known me from the show, ever see me wear any of that shit? No. Anything like that? No. But well, was, when I look back at what I used to wear in the show and I thought I was killing, oh, that reminded me of something else with my hair and panel with Tyra. We got to come back to that. What, okay. What, me... what? Tell me. Stop there. What, okay. What okay so I remember um, I, she said something like, if you notice, I had a gray tank top and a skirt, I think. And my hair was kind of like wild. It was like when I took it out after. Oh, it was after the first photo shoot. After the first photo shoot. Right. That's yeah. Right. You didn't and I had some of my hair in a bun and I had the rest like out crinkly. And mm -hmm. I remember the girls in the house saying, don't go to panel like that. And I was like, excuse me. I'm like, this is my competition. Y'all bitches saying whatever y'all want. And I'm uh -huh. like, excuse me. I'm like, I like it. Cause I did like it. Mm -hmm. So I go to panel and then Tyra is just like, girl, your hair. And she was like, when well, she said something along the lines of you can have like, like European hair with like African roots, something like that. Because like my hair was given new growth. It was given natural, it was given <laughs> Relax. It was given everything, and I just laughed because, like, she was reading me. But and nobody don't speaking about reading. Like, they, th speaking about reading, if Oscar James don't get the fuck up off this timeline, <laughs> he goes. She love her she heels. Goes, he goes. She's lying. She loves her heels. <laughs> fuck you. Um, anyway. Shut up, I, David. Look at David St. John. You know, these are these, look at all these people spilling tea. He's a producer on the show. That's okay. People, That's okay. Wait, y'all, I got a book coming out. You don't think I get... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> there you go. Promote. Um, so people people don't realize, like, because they never saw, like, even on either seasons, they didn't show my personality and how goofy and, like, funny I was. Yeah. So people are always surprised. But when Tyra told me that, like, each week she was reading my look, and it was like such a serious moment for everybody else. And I'm laughing because I'm like, oh my gosh, she's reading me. I'm like, okay. Like, I thought it was funny. So after, if you notice, when I come back to get my picture, my hair is put back because I went back there and the girl's like, told you. I'm like, told you. Up. So, up. <laughs> so I like slicked it back. But um, I love oh, that. Shit, it's so much that I'm thinking about. But that talk I'm about just the like, confessionals and the green screen. You oh, guys okay. don't do them when you leave. You do them kind of like once every, like david st john is on here who used yeah. to do these a lot of these interviews because david st john knows how to pull all the story out um yeah. you, you sat down with david st john right i'm sure you did you i don't know Maybe. she's like i don't know he's like you did you probably just don't oh, recognize him yeah i remember yeah uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah so, but you so would do them like once different. a week yeah. yeah okay so once so each episode was about a, a, a week long it was and four days that, actually Okay, so four days, and the one way they're asking you stuff throughout the, like, you have to keep the same outfit because you never know when they're going to, you could be like. He just wrote, oh, you did them with him all the time. He just chimed in. He was the person who interviewed all the time. <laughs> Say, hey, boo, we love David. So, 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 say, so say Bianca's in here. So say um, in episode one, because we were in the same outfit, say uh, Bianca says something to me, and I say, you know, I don't like Bianca. She's a bitch. And then. And then they didn't end up using that. And then in episode, say, eight, um, say I'm all the way to episode eight, and Bianca's gone, and Anna Lee is there, and they can just take out Bianca and me saying, she's such a bitch, and I have the same outfit. So they do that for continuity, so you don't know, like, so they can Ooh, cut and paste. Look, look at David. He's like, hey, so, oh, you just got so, so they can cut and paste. But, but what I the will edit. say is um, for the day where we have green screen, that was a full day. We used to like it because it was like a free day at the house where we get to stay in the house and each girl have about an hour block. So you, whoever get there first, you put what hour you want. So some girls can go at nine in the morning and then there's some girls that will go at nine at night. And mm -hmm. literally through the rest of the day, you have a free day to like cook or like swim. And then when it's your time, like you would just do whatever you do mm -hmm. to get ready. Um, Usually at the beginning, it's usually easy. They wanted you to do some, a look that was easy to replicate because you have mm -hmm. to do it a lot. So you would just usually be fresh faced or something with yeah. the tank. So you could do whatever you want all day. But literally, you would be in there for like an hour, hour and a half, mm -hmm. getting asked all the questions for the week, even though they're going to edit it to wherever they want it to go. <laughs> See, and the kids are down there going, 
ISIS is spilling tea and blah, 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 which is true. <laughs> it's the power of the edit. And, and, and to be honest with you, one of my big beefs with the show around cycle eight, I'll just put it there. I kind of reached a point where I had a meeting with a certain somebody, David knows who it is, uh, in the editing department who used to head up the editing department. And ISIS basically said, yeah, we need to talk about these edits because I even felt like my job was there to really mentor you guys. And the edits kept shifting to just constant eye roll and snappy comment. And that's not me. Yes, it mm -hmm. came out of my mouth. But when you edit it, you can Frankenstein that shit together. Oh, you would even edit it. Damn, Cause, yeah, nobody's cause, safe. Yeah, so what happens is when they start doing that, like they create the, the persona they wanted. And I felt like I was skewing you know, a very specific way. And I said, look, if you guys are just gonna keep editing me to be snap, crackle, pop, bitch, blank, eye roll, snarky comment, I won't be here. Yeah. And I'll just say, I had that conversation. Um, yeah, so that's just the truth of that part. <clears throat> so so Bianca you. said, y'all are spelling, I wanna say really quickly, yeah. um, uh, for people asking about all stars, we're not talking about all stars because you want to save it for when we get there. For all stars, yeah. And and also, um, someone asked about the towel on the head. You put the towel on the head because that means you just had your makeover, makeover? and the, mm -hmm. and they and they want to take. If you have a towel on your head before makeover, if you or see somebody scarf, say or something, scarf. Or scarf, okay. Yeah. So so this is some tea, y'all. Pay attention. <laughs> if you go back and watch. Mm -hmm. If you see somebody, if you see somebody with a towel or scarf on it where their hair is hiding, and it's shot, and that clip of them talking is before the makeover shot, before the makeover scene, then that means that they took that from later on uh -huh. to put it somewhere at the beginning before the makeovers. They do that so you don't get distracted and know. Well, even though you're still distracted, but so you don't realize that. The girl that that actually had her makeover, post -makeover. already. Mm -hmm. So, so they only, so you only see those shots when they're going to be using it before the makeover. <laughs> exactly. Look, my mug though, catch it. I'm giving y'all all the insides. Did you catch scoop. my mug? Look how it lines up. Uh, I th <laughs> okay. Um. Uh, it says, "Who is Keisha Cash?" She can't read it. It's backwards. Um. So I'm trying to think what it was something else, but I'll just let you. So yeah, so that the, was the so, two things. Okay. So the question they have um, for another question from Samantha B337, uh, Miss Isis, what was your favorite photo shoot and what shoot would you wish you could have done from that cycle? That's a oh, great oh, question. Oh, from that cycle. Yeah. I was say, because my all time. Okay. Well, first of all, what's your all time favorite shoot? From this one or from All Stars? Let well, me All Stars too. Okay, well, if it's... See, okay, see, I'm trying not to keep going okay, there, but I keep, it's all like it all... Stay, okay. stay out of All-Stars. Okay, you can do... What was your favorite shoot from that cycle that you did? And what one do you wish you could have done within The final 11? one. The final one? What, the cover room? That's our yeah, final shoot. Yeah, because oh. I should have been there. <laughs> yeah, I think you I think you would have been a great cover girl um, shoot. I mean, I think, uh, for some, I think I'm like this... I'm stronger there anyway. Well, especially now, maybe when I watched back, like I was still coming. It was, guys have to realize that was the beginning of my transition. Mm -hmm. Like I was on, I didn't transition to 21. I was on top model less than a year. I was in like yeah. of me transitioning. Yeah. So it was really quick. And the thing um, is you slay right now. When you do photos, you don't understand. Miss Isis slays a photo shoot. Yes, of course, that I book Cover Girl. Oh, yeah, I was in a Cover Girl commercial a few years ago. He said, Don't forget to mention that. All my best friends <laughs> love to remind me of oh, he's like, my little accolades. Um, uh, and okay, so my favorite, I think, are uh, Russell James, even though he was reading me saying, I don't have the, I don't have the proportions. <laughs> I watched that back like, what, And what proportions are those? <laughs> he, probably, he probably was looking because he shoots. I mean, look. Russell is an amazing photographer, sweetest, sweetest man, truly. Uh, and he shoots, obviously, a lot. Like, he shot Tyra's famous, you know, Sports yeah, Illustrated yeah. cover, where she was the first Black woman to grace that cover. Russell's used to that proportion, especially in bathing suits yeah. and bras and panties, of, you know, like, bust to hip ratio. And mm -hmm. he just said... Oh, no, you know, I, was, that, I was narrow then. Because I mean, you were flat and you were narrower then. I had I a fat transfer about. last year. And then I end up being stressed and depressed and quarantined and lost all my weight. I'm like, damn, I did all that to get to get a little bit more hips. And now I'm skinny again. So, so you know, if we could go back, I mean, I wouldn't do it again. But if we uh -huh. could, 
go back to me being now. Okay, so my favorite, I think, was that one because the colors, the composition, the silver bikini, the unbotheredness, mm -hmm. I feel like overall that's just the strongest that shot. And also com uh, composition-wise, I think uh, my favorite, I, or one I wish I would have did, was the one when they were on the sailboat. I think those shots were oh, so beautiful. Oh, those couture, yes, in, in Amsterdam. Uh, yeah, we yeah, were on the that... sailboat. And the styling, Anda and Masha slayed the styling. And they, then, of course, they yeah, were there. <laughs> Okay, so um, they were there when I was the background extra. So when I was there, I liked it even when I had got to pick out the bikini because at the time I didn't even grow breast. I didn't even grow breast tissue pretty much most of the time. So I ended up getting my breast done. But I remember I had uh, cutlets uh, that they let me keep the cutlets um, at, from the beginning. So I had them and I went in there and them along with the lady who was doing the bikinis, they were just mm -hmm. like, okay, I'm glad they let me come in there and pick without the cameras because that was a an interesting moment for me sure. you know I, mm -hmm. I didn't really I didn't even get my first bathing suit until I was going on the show when I had to send them pictures so I didn't even really learn how to tuck at that point you mm -hmm. know so that reminds me of the shoot I got eliminated on okay so yeah um which was so another just, question which we'll, I just we'll bring like up that they let me uh that they let me uh be in the room with them and like have the moment to pick a bikini that will look good on me that would make me feel comfortable but also it was metallic like I'm a metallic like I'm a mermaid mm -hmm. so I always go for anything metallic and I'm in my head probably like a drag race all-star okay I love glitter I love sparkle I love metallic so I just think yeah and they were so amazing and they were so sweet the whole time and they really really helped to make sure that um to put me in things that really look good on my body I'm trying to find the question where they there were several questions about the water photo shoot, uh, uh, and mm. I believe that is, that is the episode that you were eliminated tea. in. So there's tea there. I, way, have... I, did, I, did, I did watch, I did scroll through the episodes and watch it. And, and can I tell you, first of all, that episode was funny because we, well, it was unique because we shot it at the house because mm -hmm. all we needed was a pool of water. We knew it was gonna be a tight shot. It was just yeah. gonna be eyes in the water and Nigel was gonna shoot it. But of course I had to come, I woke you guys up. You guys were dead asleep. And I watched the introduction the other night. I laughed because I just like show oh, up. Oh, that's when you guys are coming in. Well, that's when I came in. I was like in that tank top with little Mr. J and the little D&G &G yeah. shorts and sneakers. And I like come whistling through the house and then I'm supposedly the lifeguard. Uh, but I knew you were really concerned because you'd not been, you were first, it was your first time in a swimsuit, but then it was now you're going to be in the water. Even though we were not going to see in the water, we were only going to see this. Still, okay, go ahead, T, T. We're going to end on this because there were so many questions on this. Oh, this and, is it? Oh, okay. Well, no, I mean, there, oh. I want to try and answer some people down there. It's just okay, like, so. it's so hard to like get through all these questions, but. So, so really quickly, um, you know, at the time I was, I was pre-op and um, I had just learned about tape, like taping yourself, but I didn't know you're supposed to get duct tape. So I only had the clear packing tape and I'll save it for if I ever write a book, all the things that that Oh, you're going to write a book. You're going to write a book. Uh, um, <laughs> so, so I used clear tape and I didn't know how that would hold up in the water, which I'm sure would, I mean, I think it did hold up, but I didn't know you're supposed to use duct tape because it's softer and it sticks through water. What I thought was weird was that I never see girls have two lingerie bathing suit shots back to back. So I think in other seasons. So I'm like, we just got a bikini. Why would they do that again? So in my head, I was like, they're trying to get me. So No, no actually, and they, they actually weren't. Because that underwater yeah. shoot, that was that was creative that Tyra wanted but then, to do. But before. then as the camera underneath, and you saw underneath with me and my body and my legs, I'm like, why y'all need to see that? <laughs> so, so, um, but, but what I will, what I will, um, say is that also they gave us seamless panties and a bra and the seamless panties is like so thin you can see so everything thin, yeah. it was so thin and that was before water and i'm looking like yo and but the thing is people were like oh well you just weren't confident the thing is i came from the barroom scene i'm super competitive they add they kept asking me questions and um posts that, mm. that made it seem like I was uncomfortable or unconfident, but I was very confident in my skills and I'm a good swimmer and I love the water. So I was never uncomfortable in the water. Yes, talking about it, I could say, oh, I was worried about the tape, but not in a way where it would affect my performance because guess what? If something would have fell out, oh, 
well. I never, but they just kept asking. They would have asking. never shown it on TV. Yeah, they no, did. they just yeah. kept asking in a green screen. And so to watch it back, it's like, oh, I'm worried, I'm worried. It's like, oh, no, but but you have to be worried. You know, you have to, and I never came from reality TV, so of course I'm wording it back and it's used, but that wasn't the case. And the T is, I don't remember if it was there or it was in panel. It was one of the two. But Nigel said that I wasn't the worst that day. And um, he said somebody else was the worst. And then I'm the one that went home. Yeah, and I wasn't in that judging. I don't know how that went down. I remember finding out that was somebody you that were eliminated. Uh, <laughs> I, I, remember, I remember finding out that you were eliminated and it bummed me out. And I remember, because it's so hard because I have to remain impartial because my job is I always have to go back on set and work with the girls that are left. And my job is to make sure- Oh, someone said, yes, he did say that. I don't know who said that. Oh, Nigel, oh, someone said that. Oh yeah, see? But um, I do remember that I got to actually come see you. I don't know if it was in one of the situations where we had you come in, but I saw you before we even wrapped that season. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, that really, it bothered me. I, I, I did feel though, I remember when we were doing that shoot, because I did say it on camera. I was like, okay, your eyes are not popping for me. Your eyes are mm -hmm. not popping for me. And of course they cut and edit because they use that yeah. cut with the interview. You're so uncomfortable. It just makes the whole thing look that way. Yeah. But, um, but and I did so many different things and I, I mean, I get it. I have big, my eye shape. I get it. I have to work harder to have fierce eyes. You could do it now I, though. I know if you yeah. were like this, you'd serve. Oh, <laughs> yeah, at one point, at one point I was thinking about recreating all those shots, but I'm like, I don't have no production Should. to do that. I, I mean, yeah. I would love to re recreate all the shots and do them now. Like, um, that could be a but, show but, slash pod podcast where we go through <laughs> and we recreate the people who want to because there'll be people who don't want to. Uh, we'll get people that we can recreate the shoot. That is, like, you know, a shoot. That cool. You know, a shoot that I always wanted to do. It's what? oh, I'm, I'm trying not to. I'm trying to keep it short. I think it was April season way back when they were in that big tank. They did it on Drag Race yes, too. Yes, the quench I've underwater. Always, yeah, I always wanted to get in a tank and do that type of shot because I love water and I can hold my breath, which we'll find out in All Stars for the final runway. I'm not trying to go nowhere By the way, look, that. everyone's but, saying I should do this. I should recreate all these shoots. I mean, I created them. I could probably even get all the same photographers because I know them all. Wait, uh, somebody said, what did somebody say? Nigel, Nigel said, I remember watching it. I think it was a great, oh. So yeah, mm -hmm. so, so I wasn't, and so when I got eliminated again, it's like, I don't know that they, that they put in all this about me being uncomfortable because for me, I'm probably, I was in the water more than any of those other girls on both of my seasons. I love the water. I will yeah. literally be in the water for eight hours. You were always swimming. That I remember. You I, always, I love water. Yeah. So, so, I mean, yeah, I just hated that I had a, a, a thin panty on, but that was not going to hinder me. Number one, I was, I came from a shelter with nothing. So this mm -hmm. opportunity meant everything to me. So I wasn't going to let my uncomfortability, my uncomfortability make me uh go home so when it when david it happened, st. john I was like, even, david st john even chimed in he's like jay let's do it let's recreate these shoots we can okay, do but, this but, I, we, we but wait i want to i don't know how i'm gonna be involved but since i said it i want to be involved somehow i mean Lord, outside of uh, even outside of my my shots well you know what isis i think if we were to do something like that and if there like was some show. kind of panel i think like we should figure this out because it you sounds like a so, TV show. It sounds like a show, and it sounds like you would have to be on that panel, girl, because you have a lot to say. Um, and and I'm gonna uh, before we answer some people, write down in there. I gotta answer this question. You gotta answer this question. Discomfort. Yeah. This is from Neek Sholi. <laughs> it says, Isis, how did you feel being called back for the All Star Cycle, and how did it compare with your original time on Top Model? Now I'm gonna give you this. You can't give tea into the All Star Cycle because, girl, you got to come back when we do All Star Cycle because that cycle is tea. And do uh, I have tea? Okay, Does okay, that wait for that cycle, cycle. You guys have no idea how much tea there is. Okay, for that cycle, do you just want me to be it, or do you want to cut a, a few of the different girls? Because don't give me, I will do it. We got we got to figure that out. We, we got to figure okay. that. Out. We'll ask everybody. Because uh, I, I, I feel like, I feel like, like Allison would be good on it. I know Bianca will be good on it. Yes. Bianca's I, I, like spill it. We'll have to figure it out. I don't even know how if we can if I can bring in everyone for like a I mean, few I mean, segments. We'll figure yeah. it out. We'll figure it out for sure. But answer that question. How did you feel being called back? Because you I, knew you were a fan favorite. People oh, loved oh, I you. knew. I, yeah. Funny thing is, me and Bianca, Bianca called me because we were already friends. I forgot how we became friends before the show. But she called me and said, 
Bitch, and they already said you can't say anything. So I'm like, okay, I won't, you know, confidentiality. And Bianca called me like, bitch, I know you got that call. And I was like, huh? <laughs> what? What you talking about? She was yeah. Like, bitch, I know you. I know. She said, bitch, I know that if they're having an all-stars, you're going to be there. And I was mm -hmm. like, you got the call? She was like, yeah. I said, yeah, bitch, I got the call. <laughs> and then um, when I got there, I, uh, I mean, I didn't have my teeth. Like, I didn't have Invisalign yet. I wish I would have had my teeth, uh, like, Invisalign already. Because when I look back, I said, damn, my teeth was fucked up. But, you know, I didn't have the money for it. Yeah. But, um... But look at Bianca. I, I, she was like, fuck confidentiality. She just wrote, fuck confidentiality. Yeah. So, so, um... <laughs> So I went there co completely confident because, like, I, you know, I was, it was nothing nobody could say. Like, I was that bitch. I had all the experience. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I was comfortable. I was confident. And I, I was disappointed. I, I know I, I know I wasn't supposed to go home then. Well, but we, we, you, we'll, we will spill that tea when we get to that cycle. Um, I love it because we, we literally, this is the longest Jay chat I've done. We, I'm, we couldn't get through all the questions. What I can say, because we've done almost an hour and a half, I do want to say, I love all the love and the amount of questions and that the people are like standing behind you now. Seeing that kind of love is just like amazing, amazing. What's your cash app? My cash app? What, what are you talking about cash app? Someone what? said, what's your cash app? Who mine's? I don't have Cash App. I have Venmo and PayPal. But so if you're trying to, <laughs> if you're trying to help help me out, I will for sure put it up. <laughs> um, I will say this: we haven't talked about Clark, and I will say that um, we did t t have a conversation on the Tyra show right after that. And that's oh, you did? Okay. Surprised me, surprised me with the surgery and all. You know, all of that on her talk show. And I know Clark did apologize, and that was so many years ago. I don't know what her stance is now, but but she apologized then. And I'm sure, like, you know, people are just like, I hate her. I'm just she like, you was know, 18. She, she was young. She, she was, was young. Eight. And yeah. and, and, and we and grew up in a very different area. Yeah. Um, but and... she did apologize. And after we got eliminated, me, her, and Lauren Bray did go out to eat. Well, we did go out and eat before I saw all the stuff she was saying on the episode. Mm -hmm. But, um... Because, mm -hmm. you know, it's weird. I didn't know all the girls were saying all that stuff because one thing about me, I'm not a scared bitch, you know? And it's like, it looked like it on the show. And I'm like, I wish these bitches would have said something to me because that would have been the show. That would have been the um, show. Mm -hmm. But, you know, they was, well, I was about to say a word that I probably shouldn't be saying on here. It started with a P and ends with a Ussie, okay? <laughs> that's what they were. That's what they were. Because it's like, bitch, say it. I'm from you PG could, you County, say Maryland. It, girl. I, you know, don't let the, don't let the sweetness fool you. I yeah. have, I will stand up for myself. Um, but, you know, but she did apologize. I just want, and somebody said per, per, mm -hmm. but, but she did apologize so many years ago. And, you know, it is still my story to tell, but I just want to let people know, you know, she did apologize. And, and yeah, yeah I feel like everybody on, the only person that didn't apologize so last, a few years ago at LA, Ooh. LA Fashion Week. This is so shady. Sharon Wait. came. This is so shady. I did a Mariah Carey, and I'm only saying this. I mean, it's not a Mariah Carey if you say it, but it's funny. So I, Sharon is like the only girl who didn't apologize, even though somebody who didn't make it mm -hmm. on a season that season but came back. I don't know that. I don't know her, but she never apologized. But Sharon was the only person on the show that didn't on the season that didn't apologize. So a few years ago, I saw her at Fashion Week at LA Fashion Week and I saw oh. her and I'm like okay it's the first time I'm seeing her but she didn't see me yet and then she did notice me because you know I'm coming in there like oh my uh -huh. god I looking see, gorge you know. uh -huh. and she came up and she was hey I was like hi how are you and she's like hey you know I don't remember know if you remember me but I just want to blah 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 I just want to apologize I was like from where and she was like I was, on, I was like, oh, okay. I was like, oh, thank you so much. Thank you. And I just walked away and I gave him where I carry. I don't know her. And then when mm. I left, I was like, I was like, that's kind of fun. <laughs> no, I get it. I no, literally, she, Carey, she I literally had to say like, oh my God, I just want to tell you, you're so amazing. Like, I love everything you're doing. I just wanted to apologize. And I really gave like confused, like, hmm, well, like, why are you apologizing? Who are you? And she really had to explain who she was. And that was the shade. <laughs> that was the tea. I love it. But but she's doing good too. I feel like so many of the girls are doing good, you know. But but it was funny because I'm just like, y'all did all that and I end up becoming the ISIS king. Okay. Tell it. 
tell it. And I love how it's just how successful <laughs> you are. And I mean, I, I we're definitely gonna figure out this all star cycle. We got to figure out how we yeah. do this with everybody. Um, I want to do this again with you. I, gonna, I oh, love I mean, seeing all the love down there. I can't believe this is the longest live I've done for the Jay Shack. I thought they only go an hour. I didn't realize they go longer than an hour. Oh, you can go longer. It's just that people that will new? watch longer. Pardon me? No, I, I guess. I don't know. I feel like I after an hour, mine used to cut off. Well, now, now they just keep going. We'll see what happens if I'll be able to repost it. But um, <laughs> Isis, thank you so much. This is fabulous. And thank I know you're on the you. West Coast, so you got up, honey, and you got yourself together. I got up. up. I, I, I laid this wig for you, for all of y'all, <laughs> which I never do. I usually just put one on, a little closure, and pin her. I got up and gave y'all the full, like, mm -hmm. the full, gave you everything. The full, experience <laughs> well you're looking gorgeous and they're saying they're saying isis the goddess exactly uh and yeah we're, we're you guys thank i mean it's a july 4th weekend um happy stay healthy, of july everybody stay well, in wear or wear a mask if you gotta go out wear a mask at least now yeah. our vice president is saying yes y'all gotta wear masks at least so put a mask on stay so, safe stay healthy i'm surprised he had time to do that considering that he's working to take away uh, well, they exactly. took away health care, you know, made it so people can discriminate against trans people for health care. And now mm -hmm. they're trying to push for um, job discrimination for trans people. But that's a whole different It's a whole story. different thing. I would say happy 4th I... of July, but my people weren't, uh, didn't have freedom for 4th of July. So I don't really see why I would be support, uh, why I would be supporting it. <laughs> so, so um, well, you have a happy good weekend. weekend. You have a happy weekend. <laughs> you look so gorgeous. I, I love you. Thank you for you. having me on. I, I love had you too. so much fun. Yeah, and we'll chat <laughs> real soon. And we're going to figure out, I'll call you. We're going to figure out how we're going to do the All Star thing. We got to get yes. a whole thing together. We'll figure it out. Bye, everybody. Right, bye, guys. I love you Thanks guys. For tuning in. Take care. Bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs>